Howdy photographers on a budget, my name's Chris and today I'm taking a look at some of the best value for money lenses out there if you own one of Canon's digital SLR cameras with a smaller APS-C sized sensor. So that comprises a huge family of cameras really, including the 1000D to 4000D series cameras, 100D to 250D, all the way up to the more expensive 90D, and also a whole ton of earlier Canon digital SLR cameras too. Basically, anything that isn't in their more expensive 1D, 5D and 6D series, which are full frame cameras. These lenses will also work if you use an adapter to get them onto one of Canon's mirrorless EOS M cameras, and they can be adapted onto some other camera systems too. These are all lenses that you can buy new. I'm going to start with autofocus lenses, which are obviously much easier to use, particularly for beginners, but will cost you more money. Then we'll stray into manual focus lens territory. Manual focus lenses take a little more time and practice to use, but some of them are very good and you can save a lot of money by using them. And if any of the lenses really strike your interest, then take a look in the description below. You'll find links to my full reviews of each one so you can find out more, as well as affiliate links to buy those lenses which helps me to keep these lens reviews trucking on, appreciate it. First off, autofocus lenses. Let's go from the widest angles and then zoom in. The Canon EFS 10 to 18 mm f4.5 to 5.6 IS STM is a brilliant option for anyone wanting ultra wide angle pictures on a budget. It may have a dark maximum aperture and a somewhat limited zoom range, but it's lovely and sharp. It has image stabilization too for shooting in darker situations and for getting smoother footage when you're shooting video. It's also small and light, so easy to take with you anywhere you go. At 280 US dollars or only 200 pounds, then for the price and for some dramatically wide angle pictures, it's a no brainer. Next up, we have a few zoom lenses that could replace the little kit lens that came with your camera. One of the APS-C lenses I recommend the most is the Sigma 17 to 50 mm f2.8 DC OS HSM. It's an older lens now, but it's still reasonably sharp. It has a bright maximum aperture of f2.8 for getting pictures in darker situations, as well as more out of focus backgrounds. It also features image stabilization, and at only $300 or about £300 in the UK, it really is one of the best value zoom lenses on the Canon system. But it doesn't offer you any more zoom range than your kit lens, just a brighter maximum aperture. If a long zoom range is your thing, then I have two options here for you today. On the cheaper side is the Tamron 18 to 200 mm f3.5 to 6.3 DI2 VC. It doesn't have great image quality or nice build quality, but it does offer image stabilization and a very long zoom range, all for under 200 US dollars. It's a handy option for if you want to do some super zoom photography, but you're not too fussy about image quality. However, if you're willing to pay a little more money for a lens that's sharper, then the Sigma 18 to 200 mm f3.5 to 6.3 contemporary DC OS HSM macro whew, can be found for about $300. It's nice and small and has good build quality, it can focus a little closer than the Tamron lens, and it's noticeably sharper, in fact its sharpness is pretty good for a lens with this kind of zoom range, so that's a nice option if you want a super zoom lens and you're willing to spend a bit more money on it. Alright then, we're going to leave the world of zoom lenses for a little while and look at some prime lens options. They don't zoom in or out, but as a result, they often let in more light and often have sharper image quality. First off, we have the Canon 24mm f2.8 STM. It's a simple little pancake lens for if you want to shrink the size of your camera system a bit. Its sharpness is okay, its maximum aperture of f2.8 only a little brighter than your zoomable kit lens. Really, what you're paying for here is its small size. Although at only 150 US dollars or about 150 pounds in the UK, at least you're not paying very much. Let's zoom in a little bit now. 
A lovely focal length for a lens on an APS-C camera is 30mm. It gives a lovely field of view, with a little emphasis on your subject, and one of the most popular available here is the Sigma 30mm f1.4 DC HSM-A for art. It has lovely build quality, and it's reasonably sharp, although it does struggle with chromatic aberration somewhat, but most of all, it's an easy to use autofocus lens with an extremely bright maximum aperture of f1.4, which lets you shoot in dark conditions and get very out of focus backgrounds in your images. Anyone could be forgiven for buying this lens, sticking it on their camera, and happily shooting away with it exclusively for years. At about 400 US dollars, or 400 pounds in the UK, it's admittedly not cheap, but it is good value and worth saving up for. Next up, something a little different, the very interesting Canon EFS 35mm f2.8 IS STM Macro. With its maximum aperture of any f2.8, it lets in four times less light than the Sigma lens we've just seen, but it makes up for that by having image stabilization and a brilliant one-to-one -one macro ability, allowing you to get extremely close to any smaller subject for some really fun, creative photography. In fact, to help you get those close-up pictures, the lens even comes with an ingenious, adjustable light around its front element. It's actually one of the easiest to use macro lenses out there. At only 300 US dollars, it's a fascinating option for photographers who want to get close to their subject. Next up, and zooming in just a little more, is the Canon EF 40mm f2.8 STM. It's another tiny, neat little pancake lens. This time, the focal length of 40mm lets you get a little more background separation in your images at f2.8, and also, this one is compatible with full-frame cameras in case you ever decide to upgrade. At well under $200 or under £200 in the UK, it's another good value option if you want to keep things as small as possible. Now, let's move on to 50mm lenses, and these are some of the most popular to be found on any camera system, because they can be designed to have bright maximum apertures, while still being nice and cheap. On an APS-C camera, they give a fairly tight perspective, which is great for portrait or subject photography also. The 50mm lenses I'm about to show you are all also compatible with full-frame cameras, in case you ever decide to upgrade. If you want the cheapest one possible, then the original Yongno 50mm f1.8 costs an astonishingly low 60 US dollars, or only 50 quid in the UK. It used to cost even less than that, but its popularity seems to have pushed up the price a little. It has poor build quality and slow autofocus, and not very sharp image quality, but it will happily get you those dramatic, three-dimensional images we all crave for an incredibly low price. If you want to spend just a little more money, then a Mark II version of this 50mm Yongno lens is available. The Mark II version has better build quality and can focus a little more closely to your subject, and, well, that's about it, really. The classic and most popular 50mm option is the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 STM. It gets you the same kind of images as the Yongno lens, but its build quality is smaller and better, its autofocus quieter, and its image quality sharper. It costs a little more, at just over US$100 or just over £100 in the UK. Still, that's great value for money if you want somewhat sharper image quality. And I have one more 50mm lens here for you. The Yongno 50mm f1.4 lets in 66% more light than those other f1.8 lenses I've just mentioned, letting you get faster shutter speeds in darker situations, and even more out-of-focus backgrounds. Nice! Shooting with an f1.4 lens really is a lovely experience. Its sharpness and contrast are actually not bad at all, so out of all these 50mm lenses, if I were on a budget, then this is the one I would probably go for. It's under US$200, dollars, or about £200 in the UK, so good value. Well, let's zoom in a bit again. Let's say you want a much tighter focal length for some real portrait photography. A perennial favourite here is another Yongno lens. 
their 85mm f1.8 is not the sharpest option in the universe, and its autofocus can be a little unreliable, although they have quietly updated and improved it over the years, but undeniably, the pictures this lens could get you are stunning in their background separation at f1.8. This is another lens that costs under $200. You will know as you're using it that you're working on quite a cheap option, but still, those images. And finally, one last zoom lens. I've been busy recommending the Canon EFS 55-250mm f4-5.6 IS STM to people for years now. It's lovely and small, it's got a great zoom range, good electronics, and good sharpness. Its focal range starts at 55mm, so it doesn't offer any wide-angle images, but that has the knock-on effect of offering you better image quality than an all-in-one zoom lens can do. If you're willing to use it in conjunction with a separate, wider-angle zoom lens, then it will perform very nicely for you, especially considering it only costs about $250 in the US, or just over £200 in the UK. Well, that's it for the autofocus lenses. If you want to save a bit more money, and you have the patience to manually focus your lenses, then take a look at these manual focus options I've compiled for you. Again, starting from the widest angle first. And this first lens's images are so wide that it can actually see behind you. The lens baby 5.8mm f3.5 has a field of view of 185 degrees, so be careful not to accidentally get your feet in the shot. The lens's inner surfaces have been polished to give you a neat glowing effect around the edges too. Technically, its image quality is not especially sharp, but if you are after something a bit different, then the lens can be pretty fun. A quick warning though, if you're shooting video footage on an APS-C camera, then the top and bottom of that circular image will be cut off. Next comes the Samyang 8mm f3.5 fisheye. I'd choose this one over the lens baby circular lens any day, really, for three main reasons. It's under $200, it's a bit sharper, especially when you stop its aperture down to f5.6, and finally, this lens's fisheye image completely covers an APS-C sensor, making it quite a bit more useful. Its distortion pattern is a little bit different from others, as it gives an especially wide image for a fisheye lens with only moderate bevel distortion, which leaves you with pictures that are quite pleasing to the eye. Newer versions of this lens have a detachable hood, but the same image quality. By the way, Samyang lenses are also sold under other brand names, such as Wallimex, Boa, and Rokinon. Another Samyang lens out there is their 16mm f2 model. f2 is a very bright maximum aperture for such a wide-angle lens on a digital SLR camera, although lenses for mirrorless cameras can get a bit brighter. Still, that 16mm focal length adds a touch of drama to your images, without being so wide that it becomes difficult to compose your pictures, and at f2, you can get noticeably out of focus backgrounds too, and it can be used for casual astrophotography. It's also quite sharp. It's not the most well-known lens out there, but people who do buy it tend to really enjoy it. Now, for those of you wanting something really different, and not necessarily easy to use, a macro lens option for you is the Miticon 20mm f2 4.5x Super Macro. This little lens can get you extremely close to your subject, much closer than a normal macro lens, for less than $200. Its disadvantages are that it cannot focus to infinity, it can only get you macro images, and it's also very difficult to use simply because it's so hard to shoot effectively at those close distances. You'll really want to use a tripod with this one. Still, if used correctly, it can get you some truly astonishing pictures for a very low price. Next, the Samyang 35mm f1.4. This is a popular lens because it combines value for money, good image quality, and a very bright maximum aperture of f1.4 for getting fast shutter speeds and very out-of-focus backgrounds. It's also compatible with full-frame cameras, in case you ever upgrade. At just under $400, or £300 in the UK, it's just a little less than the Sigma 30mm f1.4 art lens that I recommended earlier. Many people will want to spend a bit more money on that Sigma lens, because it has autofocus. 
but if you're happy with manual focus and you're thinking of upgrading to a full frame camera one day, then this Sigma lens is an option for you. Now then, if you're in the mood for something unbelievably cheap and cheerful, then the 60mm Holger lens is only $15 in the US, or £20 in the UK. It's a toy lens, really, with a dark maximum aperture and some very serious image quality issues, but then again, it hardly advertises itself as being a high quality instrument. Fans of Lomography might really enjoy it, its images certainly have a little something to them in their low quality. And hey, it comes in a variety of colours, too. There are other cheap Holger lenses out there, too, for you to discover, of varying degrees of optical delicacy. And finally, two more Samyang lenses, the 85mm f1.4 and 135mm f2. Now that we've reached these longer telephoto focal lengths, these manual focus lenses will be harder for you to focus, so these two lenses are not necessarily for beginners or impatient people, but anyone else could get some really impressive results with them. The 85mm lens has a very bright maximum aperture of f1.4, letting in lots of light for you and giving you very out of focus backgrounds. It's not a particularly sharp lens when used on an APS-C camera, but the quality of its bokeh is certainly lovely and soft, so your images will jump out. The 135mm f2 lens is so telephoto that it really will be quite tricky for you to use and manually focus, unless you're used to shooting that way. However, I'd prefer it, personally, it's much much sharper than the 85mm lens, incredibly sharp actually, and I prefer its more compressed backgrounds, and I like to use a lens that challenges me a bit. And well, there you have it, plenty of low budget digital SLR camera lenses out there for you Canon users, you are swimming in options, these are just the ones I thought you might find particularly interesting, happy shooting all of you, and God bless. <laughs>